Minister Cardona, thank you very much for joining us here in, the, in our New York office. Thank you, Andres. Happy to be here. Your government is currently engaged in peace talks to end five decades of a very exhausting armed conflict. Both your president, Juan Manuel Santos, and yourself have said that peace could add between one and two percentage points to GDP growth. How would that happen? And if peace, if a peace deal is finally clinched, how are you planning to finance a post-conflict Colombia? Well, first of all, the Colombian economy has been very successful, but it could be even more successful if we reach a peace agreement. I think peace will bring uh, more opportunities for growth in sectors like tourism or agriculture. Um, at the same time, peace will allow Colombian firms to be more productive, less uh, resources will be spent in defense and security. Um, peace will come with a cost, no doubt about it, but uh, we think that the cost of war is, is much higher. So when the peace agreement is made, uh, we'll have to discuss all possible ways of financing peace uh, through greater taxation, international cooperation, and of course uh, uh, debt, uh, because this is an investment. I mean, we need to uh, reach peace and, and we'll need to make a major effort to uh, pay for it. We can actually grow between one and two percentage points more uh, with peace. So that means Colombia can be uh, a country uh, easily growing between six and seven percent per year um, after a peace agreement has been made. There's another factor that you've said you could add some one or two extra percentage points to economic growth, which is the massive 30 billion dollar infrastructure program. Absolutely. During the construction phase, which is going to take most of the next five years, mm -hmm. uh, the economy is going to grow just because of this factor, uh, 150 basis points more than it grows today. So say if our potential growth rate today is uh, 5%, I think we can grow above 6% with the infrastructure program. But in the long run, it's the productivity gains. It's, it's making the Colombian economy more competitive. And that's going to add um, slightly less than 1% of growth on a permanent basis per year. Last week, you've talked about an upgrading of an already existing wealth tax, but that upgrading, some commentators have called it a sort of like a nod to the works of French economist Thomas Piketty. It caused some stirring back home, and critics argue that you should focus more on the quality of public spending rather than increasing taxes. So what's the government's strategy or formula to close that wealth gap? The wealth tax was introduced in Colombia for the first time in 2002. It has been renewed and extended every four years. This is the time to do it again. I think it is very important to collect revenues from the wealthiest Colombians to be able to invest in security and defense on the one hand and also on social sectors on the other hand. So that's the discussion is taking place right now in Colombia. The importance of renewing and extending the wealth tax, which touches only 50,000 Colombians out of 21 million workers. Out of, you know, of, of the entire population, it's only less than 1% of the population that actually pays the wealth tax. And those are the ones who, uh, to work who already have? People that have a net worth of more than a half a million dollars. So it's, uh, it's, it's individuals that uh, are relatively wealthy for Colombian standards that will pay, depending on their, wor on their net worth, between 0.4% to uh, up to 2.25%, that's the maximum rate, and that's for corporations and individuals with uh, a net worth of more than uh, $4 million. And you think that's a road that is going to help in closing the wealth? I mean, at least yes. in the minds of Colombians. We, we are quite concerned with the early childhood programs. We need to cover that uh, uh, for the entire population, uh, the, 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 the households that are relatively poor. And at the same time, we need the wealth tax uh, to continue uh, investing in security and defense. That's very important. Is Colombia now truly the region's third largest economy, bigger than Argentina? I think it is. I mean, uh, of course, there are different wa ways of measuring GDP, but uh, the standard measure in market prices is you take the nominal value of your GDP, you divide it by the exchange rate, the market exchange rate, and given that definition, Colombia is the third largest economy in Latin America. The market size uh, makes us the, the third largest country after Brazil and Mexico. Minister Cardona, thank you very, very much. Thank you.